One thing about racing is it's not just a driver, it's not just a race car, it's not just a pit crew, it's a whole combination. So if the truck doesn't get there, the race car doesn't get there, then we're not getting the race. It takes a big combination of people and organizations to, you know, be able to put the whole program together. Seeing how the fans are happy when they come out and see a sport that they love getting put on and knowing I had my hands and my input in helping with getting that set up and going, that's kind of my eye. Those guys, you know, are transporting the same equipment from race to race each and every week. They're the first ones to get there and the last ones to leave. They definitely set up the show and they closed down the show. I'm Richard Petty, and I've been around racing since I was 11 years old. My dad ran the very first cup race in 1949, and we've been going to the races ever since. My name is Tony Fripp. They call me Frippy. I am a NASCAR transportation engineer specialist. That's my personal title, but I drive the NASCAR production hauler. Bubba Wallace, driver of the number 43 RPM Chevrolet. I was born in Mobile, Alabama. Moved from uh, from there when I was two years old to uh, Concord, North Carolina. So I guess Race Central. Didn't start racing until I was about nine years old. So about seven years later, I had bought a go kart and just started traveling. Started traveling, racing everywhere, uh, any track that we could. My name is Charles Hatcher. Transportation driver for NASCAR. With the guys, it makes it a lot easier because they keep you going and, and you don't think about being away from home so much. Uh, my name is David Kahn. I'm a hauler driver slash official. We transport the equipment, TV equipment, and the equipment it takes to put the race on from racetrack to racetrack. The way I tell a lot of people is, you know, there's lots of truck drivers, millions of truck drivers, but there's 43 of us. I'm not gloating, it's just something to be proud of. I mean, it's, and I take, I do take pride in it, and I do try to represent the company well when I'm on the road. Talking to these guys is just talking to history. They've been uh, through all kinds of good things, bad things. You just like to talk to people that has had experience on the road, had experience with trucks, basically has the same interests as you have. So guys, what's it like bringing the race to each and every track for 36 weeks? Well, Bubba, it's like this. I'm the first one to get here, and I'm the last one to leave. And you know, you get on the airplane and you're out of here, and I'm on the road. Yeah, what, what do you do when you get here anyway? Well, Richard, when I get here, I have to make sure my truck is clean, looking real good. Then I have to unload my trailer. Then I have to set my trailer up. Things have changed a little bit. Things has changed yeah. a lot. You used to have to bring all that stuff in a pickup truck. Now you exactly. bring a big, nice Mack truck. When the race gets ready to end, we'll go inside and tear down all the caution lights and pit in lights and inspection stuff for the NASCAR technology trailer. After that, I'll come back in and start putting, uh, tearing down the slide outs and all that stuff on my hauler, the NASCAR Productions trailer, and we'll load up the TV fiber, crew bags, all the equipment we have for you know, our trailer with, that deals with the production side. 
and then we'll load all that up and then we'll make sure everybody's ready to go between myself, David Conn, and Ralph. And once we're all ready and loaded, we'll take off. Who you think's gonna win the race this weekend? I'm picking Jimmy Johnson. Bubba Watch. What about you, Ralphie? I'll be whoever crosses the line first. I ain't sure who it's gonna be. <laughs> Dear boy, how about you, Deacon? Oh, I think gonna be Mr. Number Nine. Goon Squad, yeah. <laughs> Myself, David Kahn, Ralph, and Charles Booker T. Hatcher. <laughs> the Goon Squad. Tony is Tony's officially the head of the Goon Squad. Because he is he always has something going on all the time. It's never a dull moment with Tony. Give me a hug, good night. Give me Somebody gonna hug me tonight before I go to bed. Give me a hug, man. Like, we joke at each other and pick at each other constantly. Hey, right Siri, right wake right me up in eight hours. Oh, she got us. You're gonna wake up at 5.36. It's just a tight bond that we are, you know, that's four. We're always together, traveling together, on the road together, eat together, room together, so. It just makes time go by faster, you know, when you can have fun with people you get along with. Then we, you know, came in and uh, got our 10 hours in. So uh, that was pretty much just going to chill out. I'm going to jump back in the truck in a little bit and just listen to a little soft music, hot and soul, and uh, chill out a little bit. And uh, after that, get ready to go to bed, get my 10 hours in, and uh, get up in the morning, shower, and... Uh, be all fresh, ready to go, and do some more trucking. Get on to Texas. So what's the plan, Deacon? How you want to do Texas when we get there? You want to put up the lights? How you want to do it? Sweet. Uh, whatever you want to do, at the time we get there and what have you, maybe get close to dark or whatever. You want to do them before we go to the motel, we can. I gotta go in in the morning and help uh, unload trucks and power up and all that stuff. Yeah, Tim, boy, we'll play it by air, but I'll come help you out, you know, I'm here all week. I got one special friend, Anthony. He's a super nice guy. When Charles is a good friend, though. Um, I've known him now for 10 seasons. And then come find out later on down the road, he asks, our supervisor, could I ride with him? I got to know him pretty well. Uh, but just seeing him in sport, he loves racing, so that's good. And I don't know why, but they love to pick on me all the time. You know, it's, they just keep something going about me all the time, you know. Watching Charles be Charles, it's, you know, it's always something funny with Charles. He's kind of like the, the, you know, the guy we, we joke on a lot, so. Seeing Charles, you know, do what he does, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, when you're traveling in groups, we try and look out for each other, let each other know where the bears are hiding at, because they'll sneak up on you. We got a broke down big truck on the shoulder, got his orange reflectors out. So you got gators laying out, which is, you know, a piece of tire that came off of a semi truck or something in the road, you know, a gator. Slow vehicle. Just kind of look out for all the road hazards that we have. Breaker, breaker, one nine. Think you know trucker lingo? Give these a try. That bear bite's gonna cost you. What's a bear bite? Speeding ticket. Make sure to stay within the double nickels. What's a double nickel? 55 mile an hour zone. Oh man, poor guy's taking a ride in the meat wagon. What's a meat wagon? Ambulance. Heading to Texas, to the Big D. 
What's the big D? Dallas. Copy that. We got ourselves a real hauler here. 10 7. And then once we get to Texas, we'll park and stage up for them to wash our trucks and get them all shiny and clean. And then we'll start the process of unloading all over again, which is probably about a 24 to 34 hour time span between loading and unloading. We're unloading our haulers and uh, getting prepped, pulling off all our equipment so that we can go start putting up the uh, safety equipment, caution lights and all that stuff around the racetrack. Time and scoring people will be here tomorrow and they get, they get, we get their stuff off so they can get up, get start set up, race control, getting ready for the weekend. We got our new uh, iconic Mac anthems here. Kind of like something new from, uh, how does it feel for you driving an iconic 43 car? It's a new ride for you. Like, we got our new trucks, Cowboy got new trucks. <laughs> yeah, loaded question with the boss in here. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, it's been great. Um, ever since I climbed in at Pocono last year, uh, the, the team uh, really welcomed me in with open arms. Um, you know, very supportive of every decision and every call I made on the car. And uh, we, we continue to grow from those four races that we had. And then I never stopped blowing their phones up going into the off season because I needed a ride. So, uh, yes. So we were hungry to, uh, to land somewhere and, and uh, they, they allowed me to drive the 43, jump in the 43 to start my rookie season. And um, we've had some ups and downs, uh, as any racer would. And uh, we're continuing to grow together and figure out what our cars need. So it's been a fun journey uh, from being at the racetrack with Richard uh, to being away from the racetrack, spending some quality time and, and growing that chemistry together. And it's, it's all been part of the, the fun journey that we've had. So I, I've, I've loved it every step of the way. Yeah, yeah. we just got to get him more races to get him out from being a rookie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ball, right? yeah. Yes. If I make the mistake, it's not a rookie mistake. If he makes it, it's a rookie, it's a rookie mistake. mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anytime you get a new vehicle, whether it's a, your first car or a brand new semi for our race team, it's it's always exciting. So for me to, to be, you know, in my rookie season driving the 43, the iconic number 43, for Richard Petty and Richard Petty Motorsports just is, I still look up, look at it as, are you serious? You know, it's one of those moments, like I'm racing on Sunday, where they used to watch the guys all the time the last couple of years, and hopefully, you know, one day of, of being there. Now that we're here, making the most of it, just, uh, just exciting times. And every time we get on the racetrack, our car looks great, it runs great. Uh, so you always have a great feeling when you're out there on the racetrack. You just let off on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just let off going no, no, off turn four. Yeah, no, yeah, no go in zone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, man. We'll see you when okay. we get up there. Okay? All right. Thanks, sir. Think about it. Think about it. Okay. Got it. Get road speed. Got it. Okay. I got it. <laughs> see y'all. Yeah. yeah, you know, the truck drivers are a different group. And uh, right now, Cowboy's at the top of the list. He's got his new Mack truck. Takes everybody around, shows all the features of the new truck and stuff. So, uh, like I say, he's he's the head truck driver right now as far as uh, the NASCAR crew goes. We'll load up this afternoon, this evening. In the morning, I'll come in about five o'clock and leave, um, so I can get to Richmond in time to get truck washed, cleaned up. Then, 5:30 we park. Once we all get parked, then we can unload toolboxes and start setting up some of those stuff. So those guys don't have to, and it's not such a cluster on Friday morning. Basically same thing on Saturday, just food practice, get them what they need. And then Sunday, once get everything going, I try to rest if I can. And once the race starts, start just kind of packing what I can up, you know, and getting ready so those guys can get on the plane as fast as they can, I can get on the road as fast as I can, get home. You know, you and I go way back, back in the day. Back in the day, that's yeah. it. So, uh, I remember when you used to be on a racetrack with the 43 car whooping everybody's butt. <laughs> we what tried. Was, what was the secret to that, Richard? 
you know, I don't know. <laughs> you know, well, you know, I drove, drove the car and owned the car. My brother did all the engine work. Dale Emma, my cousin, you know, was crew chief and put all the boys together. And we didn't have the, like seven, eight people. And we were building the engines, the cars, and everything. So it was a real close knit operation. And, you know, we, us and a bunch of other guys that came through sort of laid the foundation for what NASCAR is now. I remember, I remember Richard real good when you used to drive the race car and you had, had the towel. You used <laughs> yeah. to pipe down on Well, what happened, if you run and, and uh, you just get dried out, even though we had a thermos bottle and you suck some water or whatever, and uh, but your, your mouth would just dry out, so I'd get a old red rag and they'd soak it, you know, and you just chew on it like like my baby blankets, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that, yeah. Was my, that was my pacifier, so yeah. it made it work. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Yeah. So you, you didn't have all these comforts these kids have today, did you? No, yeah. no. We, we, we had to tough it out. They, yeah. You didn't even know what they, Palestine was, they, did you? Yeah. They got fire steering, they got all these uh, blowers bringing fresh air in, got all this heated deal. Then they got the radio tires. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and, then, yeah, and then, they get, then they get the talk and listen to the music and all yeah. this stuff. Yeah, let's see, 150 mile an hour back then, 220. Uh, big deal, you know what I mean? Everything, everything is relative, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And when, when we run 150, 60 mile an hour, we had tires about this wide. You know, and then they had grooves in them, so there's about that much rubber on the ground. Now they got these great big wide tires, they got fire steering, they got radio, they sit and in there. They got the little cooling cool, system. Cool, oh, cool yeah. And all that, you know. I told them, I, I put it this way it can't be hard because I used to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so when they complain about it, I said, don't give me that crap, I've been there before. Right, fans, these two are going head to head. The first truck went to work in 1890, while the original stock car crossed the finish line in 1949. A lot has changed over the years to make these vehicles safer, more efficient, and connected. Let's see how they stack up. Anti-rollover technology was developed in 2005. It automatically applies the brakes to help keep those wheels on the road. In the 1960s, the full-on roll cage was widely used among racing teams, but today it's required. One by one, different parts of the truck were streamlined to better displace air around the cab and trailer. This helps lessen drag and makes it more fuel efficient. Similarly, in racing, different parts are designed to have more downforce. This helps the car stay on the ground and makes speed more efficient. These days, trucks know when to shift, even before the driver does. With predictive crews, routes are stored in the GPS to optimize speed and save fuel. Lap time, engine issues, track bar position, the new digital dash connects drivers with 24 new insights while on the track. Wow, can you believe it? Where will these go next? Yeah, I can say the same thing about me, because Dale didn't have a nice truck. Back then, so things come a long way. No, I mean, <laughs> when, when we went to the race, I'd drive the truck, Dale would drive the truck, my brother would drive the truck, you know, just you whoever. Drive the truck up. Yeah, I mean, I every, everybody, everybody drove. It didn't yeah. make any difference. That's right. But exactly we'd, go, right. we'd go from North Carolina to California and never stop. I mean, we used to go down the road and change drivers while I was going down the road because yep. there wasn't no interstates or none of that kind of stuff. Yep. So you had to make time. And the way we made time was with the wheels rolled. Right. So, uh, you know, you, you stop, uh, you, you hopefully you find a truck stop where you can get you something to eat. If you didn't, thing ran out of gas, and then you stop and get you a, a Coke and a pack of naps and go, keep going. Well, all bologna sandwiches and keep on going. Well, we didn't have time for the bologna sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> seeing how everything kind of builds up into, like you start from nothing, you get there, it's a big old racetrack, and then by the time we're done setting up, you have all types of stuff just set up, and you look back and you're like, wow, we did all that in two days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, running good, uh, you know, winning's great, but if you run good, you feel like that the crew's done their job, we've done our job as, as owners, uh, you know, we get the, the fans excited about it, uh, 
all of the, the people that help support us and stuff. And if everybody winds up having a good weekend, then, uh, you know, we feel like it, uh, that's about as good as we can do. So Cowboy, you know, you know, you drive trucks, and you guys travel also, but for us, I kind of feel a little different being away from home. And what's road life to you? It's it's tough sometimes, but right. you know, this this is a family that you're really with more than you are your family, and uh, you know, you just gotta make Bust it happen. It yeah, yeah. Just gotta, and, yeah, and you depend on these guys a lot. That when you know, when times you need. I think everybody in the sport is is one big family. You know, we, when when something you know bad goes wrong, and everybody's there for support. Although at the end of the day, we are competitors. We're still one big family, and everybody in the motorsports world is, is all family. So we, we all understand the struggles that you know racing you know provides, and uh, so to be able to have some people that you can actually lean on outside of your race team is is, is pretty nice. Find you something you can do where you don't think it's work, okay, and try to make a living out of it. That's right. And I grew up around a race car and didn't know any better. And so that was my way of life, my way of my life for my wife, and, and but it's still, you still gotta be committed or you need to go do something else. So when are you gonna take a ride with me? Uh, let me look at my schedule and I'll get back to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I really like that. Okay. Let's get a background check on his license yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just check Bob, Bob, a after homestead, you'll call him. Yeah, plan it out. Yeah, well, after homestead, we'll plan it out. Yeah, I'm right back. Drop me off about an hour. Drop, drop me to the airport. What's up, Charles? What's up, bub? What's going on? How you doing? Good. Good hey, to see Rich. you. How you doing, buddy? Look at that. Look what I got for you, buddy. How about that? That was good. You like that? All right. Let's do it. Ready? Here we go. I love it. Oh, yeah. Race. Race? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the box. You're in the box. Yeah. Yeah.